Welcome to Electronics and More. In today's video, I'm going to be swapping out a couple of faulty integrated circuits in my digital multimeter. This is the one I use for all of my videos. I'll be using this Model 898D SMD hot air rework station, and it's also a soldering station. This is definitely a must-have if you're into electronics and electronics repair. This unit has a screw-in fuse on the back for easy replacement, and everything is displayed in degrees Celsius, which is not a big deal if you have 200 degrees Celsius showing on the display. You would take 200 degrees, multiply it by 80%, that gives you 160. You add 160 to 200 degrees Celsius, that's 360, and then you add 32 degrees, to give you 392 degrees. So it's very simple to convert, multiply by 0.80, and then you add 32 degrees to get Fahrenheit. The maximum temperature of this hot air unit is 450 degrees Celsius, which is a little under 800 degrees. And the maximum temperature of the soldering iron, let's turn that on, it's now heating up degrees Celsius. Alright, so if I wanted to go higher, I could push that button, and now I'm over to there. Just keep pushing that to change the position. This is currently set at 350 degrees Celsius for the heat, and the accuracy, I'm not too sure if it's totally exact at 350. I doubt it, but it's close enough. And let me push that again, and I can go higher. And the maximum on that, I think, is also the same. 480 is the top end for the soldering iron, degrees Celsius. Let me go back over there and see how high that one goes. So it's 480 for everything. All right, 480, 480. Let me turn the soldering iron off. Don't need it. Let me put that back down to 350 Celsius. Push it down, and we're good to go. There's a magnet inside the handle. Unless this is removed from the handle, it will not turn on. There you go. And it's very quiet, as you can hear. This position is 5 for the flow. That's the maximum airflow. And you can turn it all the way down to 1. That's the least amount of air. I leave it in the middle around four and a half, five. As soon as I hang it up, turns it off. You can see it dropping, and the fan continues to run to cool off the heating element inside the nozzle. Now there are several tips you can use. You can see this round one, which is one I would use very often. Perfect for small components. Larger components. And you have a couple of these square ones here, that one, and you have one that's a little larger. And if you have larger components, these come in different sizes. You can get one that has four of these, one, two, and then one on the side, one on the other side. So all the heat is directed at the leads and not the chip itself. So if you had a large chip, it would do both sides of the leads. You could take your electrostatic tweezers, and then lift the component off the board. The solder and flux that I use is right here. It's 63% tin and 37% lead. This melts around 185 degrees Celsius. It's perfect if you have stencils for going over the areas where the IC is going to sit, or you could take a very small needle and drop a little bit on each pad position the IC like I'm going to do, and then apply the heat. When you purchase the unit, you get the three round tips, the small, the medium, and the large. And with the soldering iron, you get about 10 tips. I mean, it's really a great deal. All different sizes, chisel point. Very nice. You can see it melted already there. That's turned off. I highly recommend you purchase a set of these electrostatic tweezers 
with these do if your body picks up a static charge when you go to touch a component especially if you're not wearing an electrostatic wristband like you see over there what's going to happen that charge will transfer through the tweezers to the tip and you will end up destroying a component with this special coating the static charge that's on your body cannot make it to that tip to be discharged on the component very very useful they come in a lot of different tip sizes. Curved is my favorite, and we'll be using that in this demonstration. Good idea to have an eye loop. You can also purchase one that you can wear on your head. And to be extra safe, you can purchase a wristband like you see here. There's a resistor between 1 and 10 mega ohms between this connection here and this clamp. You can put this on your wrist connected to the negative of the circuit with the battery disconnected, chassis ground if you're working on a large television, or you can also take this and connect it to a grounded metal object close by to where you're working. Straps like this are very inexpensive to purchase. You can find them just about anywhere online. Now to get started, a while back I ended up damaging my good tester, this is the WaveTech 27 XT. One of the components over here, I was testing a circuit which had high frequency and high voltage, and it was a little too high, ended up frying this component. I traced it back to that component, and I did swap that one out, and it eliminated the problem that I had, but I did discover another problem that was caused as a result of the high voltage. This component I did by hand. I'm going to give you a close-up in a minute of that component. To do it, I took very small cutters, cut away all the leads one by one, took tweezers, lifted it off the board, and then using a soldering iron, I desoldered all the leads, cleaned all the pads. Using my flux pen, I put flux on all the pads, positioned the IC, and then I soldered it back in. Let me give you a closer look at that one. All right, we're going to be swapping out this 14070B IC. That's a CMOS SSI quad exclusive OR and NOR gate. Many circuit boards use silver bearing solder, and as a result of that, you will require higher temperatures in order to melt the solder. I'm going to set mine at 325 on the rework station, and the dial is going to be positioned at number four. This is the tip I'll be using. It's the smallest one I have right there. I'm going to heat up that integrated circuit, remove it, and pop in a new one. Let me power up the rework station and let's desolder that IC. Lift it off the handle and it should reach the proper temperature in around 15 seconds. Here we go, taking this one out right over here. And there we go. Let me put this back in the cradle. And it will continue to run until the heating elements cool down and then turn off. As you can see, the board is not damaged from the heat. Everything came out beautiful. I'm going to apply a little bit of solder paste to each one of these pads, position the new IC, and apply the heat again. Because I do have to apply the flux under magnification, I'm going to have to stop the video, apply the flux, come back and show you what it looks like. As you can now see, there's a very small amount of soldering paste on each pad. 
I'm now going to take the integrated circuit, position it exactly over each pad, and come right back. The component is now in position. I'm going to apply heat, and it will flow nicely into the solder paste. The temperature is set for 285 on the rework station. Up and down each side and you'll see exactly when the solder starts to flow. There it goes. Up and down both sides. And that's it. I'm going to take a close look at it to make sure there's no bridging and then give you a close-up image. And here it is, all completed. You can see the IC soldered very nicely to the board. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.